Hope you like that. This was all graded and cut in Final Cut Pro using Dehancer. And I wanna share with you what I learned about using Dehancer in Final Cut Pro. This video is one part of my long-term review of using Dehancer for this video, specifically in Final Cut Pro. But Dehancer is a film emulation software that is great at what it does, that allows you to obtain a film look in your online content, short films, documentaries, spec ads, and even photography. It is packed with a ton of features and presets that allows you to honestly achieve any look you are going for. Although it is a great plugin, it does have some downsides. Some downsides that are specific to Final Cut Pro, which I'll be diving in in just a minute. But let's talk about what makes Dehancer great. Dehancer is an intuitive film emulation plugin that is literally drag and drop. The interface is pretty simple. It sits over in the effects side panel of Final Cut Pro, but it is broken off in sections with features such as converting your footage from log to rec 709 with profiles that are tailored towards specific camera manufacturers, using false color and clipping, halation, bloom, film grain, and a new feature called film damage, and a ton more that I'm definitely not listing, but more of those will go in as I continue to work with Dehancer and give my reviews on the features. You really can't go wrong with Dehancer. It is literally a full service plugin that is filled with presets, but also allows you as much control as you need for any colorist dream. Now the not so great things that I found with using Dehancer and Final Cut Pro so far. It is that it is definitely heavy on your system. It can really bog down your system that basically kills the experience. You will experience some drop frames, which I would advise you to lower your resolution, get a more powerful machine, and definitely make sure you have a ton of space on your hard drive or external hard drive. Next thing that I found is that the camera profiles are pretty scarce, specifically when it comes to ISO values that are available in Dehancer for Sony cameras. Basically, you're limited to 640 to 12,800, which means that for some of the clips that I've shot, even for this video, I am limited to 640 or 12,800, and I'm shooting in 12,800 right now, and that's because I will be converting this footage directly in Dehancer. So I have to shoot in this profile in order to make sure that I am hitting it spot on. But to Dehancer's credit, they have updated some of the profiles that you can find in Dehancer for Sony cameras. And there may be more, really haven't checked it. And then there is one major reason why I ditched using Dehancer and Final Cut Pro. And that is the LUT export feature. It simply does not work when I try to use it in Final Cut Pro. I'm not sure if it's because of this Dehancer and Final Cut Pro or the systems that I'm using, these Macs that I'm using to try and export it, but it doesn't work. So I jumped over to DaVinci Resolve. It works great. So I just stuck with using DaVinci Resolve because I wanted to create some LUTs that work for my workflow, which you can find my F-Log LUTs down in the description below. I have a full LUT pack coming out soon, and I'll tell you more about that in a later video. Now with all of that said, I still stand by what I said in my short term review of Dehancer early this year and that it is a great program a cheat code to help improve your skills when it comes to managing and color grading. It vastly improved my experience and in my opinion, the quality of the content that I create. You literally can create to taste with Dehancer and I'm still learning to use this program. I have a few features that I enjoy using that I've been sticking with, but as I continue to create, I will continue to experiment and explore and push Dehancer to its fringes. But you can learn more about Dehancer by clicking into this playlist right here and follow the link in the description to get a free trial of Dehancer while staying awesome. Stay awesome.